What is up guys? I wanted to hop on here and do an update on how my uh, carnivore, full complete carnivore experiment went and then how the reintroduction is going and also kind of showcase some of the foods that I eat on a daily basis, some that I plan to incorporate. Um, yeah, so basically to start off, uh, for more or less the, about near the end of November to about the end of December, I did complete carnivore, strictly just meat, mainly just beef, uh, beef, pork rinds, um, some sardines, water, that's it. I was feeling pretty good for sure, um, but again, my entire goal for all this was really to use that as an elimination diet um, and then to slowly incorporate uh, what I believe to be healthy whole foods. Um, so to start off with what I started with, now, there's not necessarily any order uh, really specifically to do this. Um, I intend on being animal based for the rest of my life, carnivore-ish, whatever you want to call it. Um, meat will always be, I firmly believe, um, the basis of my diet, the foundation, uh, including organ meats for sure, I really think those are necessary. But what I started with, the first thing, probably shouldn't have been the first thing, uh, was 85% dark, was dark chocolate. Um, I don't have any right now. You know or know what, what dark chocolate looks like. Uh, but basically when you're doing um, a reintroduction of foods, you, what you want to do is eat that food two or three times a day over the course of three days and then assess how you feel. It's not always going to cause just or potentially might not even cause gut or uh, intestinal distress. For me, for the dark with the dark chocolate, what I noticed was brain fog, um, headaches was was really the prominent one. Um, some pimples popped up, and a little bit of joint pain. So it actually wasn't any intestinal distress at all. So that's something to be aware of. Um, now the thing with reintroduction is the longer you go without certain foods, and then you reintroduce them and you have a, a, a negative response, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's um, an allergy or sensitivity. It could be your gut, you know, your gut microbiome is changed, down regulation of enzymes. Um, if you go without carbs or sugar for a long time, reintroduction of even a small amount of carbs can definitely cause issues. So I, I do plan to, to try dark chocolate again um, at some point because it is, you know, I think a great source of um, magnesium for sure that's the main thing I'm concerned about uh, really good way to get magnesium it's a nice treat after you know after the uh, the meal so yeah so that didn't work out then I went to no that's not what I did a second this actually was blueberries blueberries you guys know blueberries and avocados that's been like my carnivore ish thing for a long time um, went really well um, these ones aren't organic but they are wild God, who knows with the labeling laws and stuff, what, what means anything anymore. Um, but yeah, I, I try to have them just at the end of the day. I'm a firm believer in having your carbs in the end of the day for a lot of reasons. That's another video. Um, so those went over well. Around the same time, I did cranberries. Uh, these ones are organic. They were on sale for a dollar a bag. So like I, I think I have 10 bags in my fridge right now. Um, fantastic for repairing your gut lining. Uh, the mucosal lining um, and uh, the uh, incorporation and growth of Acromantia mucinophila uh, bacteria, which is really important for your mucosal lining. Um, pork rinds, of course. So some people, so I got like, everyone knows this brand, the Baconettes brand. I really hope all this is in frame, I really do. But the ones I'm really digging, actually use the, the unopened bag. Uh, this Lava Vizita brand. Um, so they're like the harder, crispier ones that actually have a lot of the fat attached to it still. I like to bounce back and forth between the two. And another nice tip, put those in with your bone broth and they like crackle and they're almost like little soup croutons or something, like, you know what I mean? Really good. Um, so that's what I've always been doing. I just, just bought sauerkraut. Gotta try the kraut again, you guys know I love my kraut. Um, I'm hoping this goes over well. Fermented vegetables, everyone knows they're good. Um, Paul Saladino would, would disagree. 
especially about the cabbage. I know he's spoken about cabbage uh, pesticides and stuff like that. But. Um, and then avocados, of course, I have like a bunch of avocados. You guys know I love my avocados. Mineral water. This is a new incorporation uh, that I've introduced as of the past, in the past month. I never really drank mineral water before, but it's, it's so good, man. Like kind of, you know, water, just drinking water, it can get a little boring, you know. I haven't really done any flavored ones, but just having that carbonation and then also knowing that I'm getting some magnesium, some calcium, you know, calcium can be a little lacking on uh, non-dairy carnivore diets. Uh, phenomenal. San Pellegrino is my go-to brand, but I know uh, there's a lot of other good ones out there too. And then, so I got bone broth powder. That's definitely something that I eat or drink every day. Um, I am saving my bones. I've made my own bone broth before. I'm going to do that again. Muscles. So these are the muscles some people were messaging me about. Um, Anchor Bay. They are from Chile. Yeah, they're from Chile. So I just had some concerns with some of the canned ones because one, as far as I could tell, they're all in sunflower oil. Um, and then also they're all from China. So I do think there might be some quality concerns there. And... That's about it. Aside from, I mean, I'll show you what else is in my fridge. It's gonna be hard to set it back up again, but and I also want to try to keep this short. So, okay, tub of beef tallow, more San Pellegrino, a little bit of bacon, all those bags of uh... oh grapes. Grapes was another one. Just to reintroduce grapes. Um, whereas Veritrol, yada yada, they're delicious. I do think fruits are definitely a safer option to eat than a lot of vegetables. A whole another story. Most of uh, my following is familiar with that. Defrosting some meat, of course. A little bit of um, lunch for tomorrow at work. Avocados, some bacon lard. Um, nothing else is really. Oh, limes. I just bought limes because apparently squeezing some limes on top of pork rinds are phenomenal. My uh, Latino friend at work told me that. He said it's a very common thing that Latinos do. And then freezer meat. Meat, blueberries, that's the bag of bones. Beef, 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 beef. This is that uh, nose to tail ground beef. Phenomenal way to get your organ meats in. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So next on the docket, um, this is a really bad way of doing this, I know, but so unprofessional. Um, next things are going to be, let's see, egg yolks for sure. I kind of want to wait a little bit further on because I am, again, I do have an autoimmune uh, thyroid issue, Hashimoto's. So I, I started with carnivore and I'm kind of progressing more into uh, an AIP protocol. Um, so the last thing I want to introduce is going to be dairy and eggs. I really hope they go over well. I've been missing like my Parmigiano Reggiano cheese and you know goat's yogurt, that type of stuff. Um, so hoping that those go over well. I'm definitely going to start with yolks before whites. Um, what else? Sweet potatoes, that's going to be on there. Honey, raw honey is probably going to be one of the next things that I incorporate. Um, dates, you know, so like, again, I really think if we're smart about our timing and consumption of carbohydrates, that they can be beneficial. Um, and I know a really common thing with people doing carnivore is... Uh, caloric deficit they're in a caloric deficit so frequently that can really mess with your hormones um, it is hard especially if you work like a physical job like I do um, and then plus working out it's just like it's really difficult to get enough calories in um, of just meat um, I was eating some like pork fat not super ap ap appetizing to be honest with you by itself I mean I I add extra fat to like my steaks and stuff like that but it's like can only do so much so I do think some healthy carbs have their place um, that's pretty much all I wanted to say so it's exciting it's actually really exciting too. like incorporating foods one by one it's like ooh, what's the next thing you know that I have to look forward to and it really really makes you appreciate the little things like despite the fact that in the end of all this I'm basically going intending on eating maybe 15 to 20 foods total like day in and day out like meat being like one of those things, like meat's in its own fucking category. Um, you know, meat, seafood, some fruits, some starchy vegetables, 
you know, not a whole lot of the stuff, um, honestly, but it's all really good. It's all really nutritious. That's the main thing. Um, because it, in my mind, it all comes down to how you feel. And if you can eat healthy and still taste and still tasty, all the better. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it. Catch you next time.